Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be looking at buying PC components on probably, for my money at least, the most popular PC components website, and that of course would be Newegg.com. Now before you run to the comments, I fully know this is an exercise in futility because the best way, at least that I've found for parting out things on the internet and getting the best prices possible is actually just to head over to PC Part Picker because it is constantly updated with the most up-to-date pricing and everything else. But let's pretend for a moment that doesn't exist and we're relegated to just Newegg.com. Maybe for example, you're buying everything using PayPal credit and things like Amazon just aren't really an option because for whatever reason, your payment method doesn't work with Amazon.com. Whatever the case is, let's pretend that's the case for a moment and we're flying blind with no PC part picker. Uh, for reference, today is uh, 3-18-2019. That's March 18th, 2019. For those of you that uh, use a different scheme for your numbering of the months and days, because here in the United States, we number things a little bit strangely compared to the rest of the world. Regardless, let's hop over to Newegg and see just what we can part together flying blind here and see if we did any kind of decent value whatsoever. So the way that I'm actually gonna run through this really quick is I'm gonna go through Newegg's process, find all the parts there, not peeking over a PC part picker whatsoever, and then I'm gonna go ahead and build as similar a build as I can on PC part picker. Now, all of the core components are gonna stay the same there, whether it be the CPU or the GPU, but components that don't really affect performance or that can be interchanged with other components like RAM of the same speed, just of a different brand or a different case, things like different power supply, different motherboards, that sort of thing. As long as it meets the basic criteria of the original build and it's cheaper on PC part picker, I'll go ahead and swap it in there and I'll see just how different the prices are. So with that, let's go ahead and hop over to Newegg, get going on this thing and then hop back to PC part picker and see how we did. So to start out here, we're actually gonna head over and uh, look for a Ryzen CPU. And that's just because I am fairly confident they are gonna be the best value out there. And I'm probably gonna be splitting hairs here between something like a 2600 and a 1700 because the pricing is so similar. Ooh, but then the 1600 does swing in here. And the nice thing about the 1600 and the 1700 compared to the 2600 is the 2600 only comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler. And if we ignore that you can get the Division 2, let's pretend we hate that game, we don't want it. But the 1700 and the 1600 both come with the uh, the Wraith Spire cooler instead of that Wraith Stealth. So they are gonna be able to have a little bit more thermal headroom, except that the 2600, because of its improved architecture, it's on the Zen Plus architecture instead of the original Zen architecture, it'll see higher overall clock speeds. And especially if you pair it with a cooler later on, you're gonna get a, probably a couple hundred extra megahertz out of it. But I'm actually going to go ahead and take what I think may be the best value here. And for gaming, I don't see a whole lot of games using tons more threads. Anyways, I'm actually going to go with the Ryzen 5 1600. I don't know if there's a wrong answer here, though. Whether you're going with the 1600, 1700, or 2600, uh, you're maybe splitting hairs here. So I'm going to go with the 1600 because it's the cheapest but that doesn't mean that's right for everyone. Now I'm gonna actually do something a little bit off the beaten path here. I'm gonna go with an open box deal because it's gonna save me about $10 on this particular motherboard and it allows me to get a something like a two by eight kit now for RAM and then go back and add another two by eight kit down the road if I want to increase the 32 gigabytes or even start with a, a two by four kit and end up adding another two by four kit if I wanna get to 16 gigabytes. It gives me a little bit more flexibility, I think. Though if open box deals make you a little bit nervous, these other, th th this ASRock for example, is not much more expensive. And that's sort of the case with a lot of these B350, B450 boards, much more than $60 and you're gonna be getting four DIMM slots, but I'm gonna go with what's cheapest. Now Ryzen does tend to like faster memory. So I'm gonna go ahead and check off some of these sort of middle-ish to faster uh, kits here. And that's just because I find, or at least I've seen that 3,000, 3,200, those, those speeds typically are about where the best uh, value, the best return for your investment comes in terms of speed. If you go faster than that, a lot of times you end up sacrificing a lot more money. And then we're gonna move over to 
we're actually going to go for a 2x4 kit and start with 8 gigabytes of RAM because for gaming, in all honesty, that's what you need. And then 16 gigabytes is sort of what you would want. It looks like the cheapest is this 5799 kit, but I don't like the color scheme. I know that's just a gripe that a lot of you will find unacceptable for going for a value build, but you can spend $2 more and get a neutrally colored kit and uh, be just fine. So we're going to go that route and take this neutral gray and black kit from Team Group. So as far as cheap gets, we can go ahead and add this to the cart and we would get 10% more off as well. So as far as power supplies go, I do feel strongly you should get an 80 plus certified power supply. So that's what we're gonna do here. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's any great deals on power supplies at the moment. So I'm gonna double check this 400 watt one here to make sure it has the connectors that I need. It has a six pin PCIe. I'm actually not gonna buy this one. So this EVGA 500 watt one actually comes with enough power connectors to really satisfy any graphics card at this point in time. And uh, we're about to see the price. Fingers crossed that it's not too expensive. Okay, so for $35, that's not a fantastic value, but that is a decent value. It's definitely something I can live with. And now we're gonna head over to the graphics card side of things. So since we're working with a pretty small chassis here, I'm actually gonna go for this EVGA card because it does give us a very small card to work with. We have the slots, the expansion slots that we need to fit a triple width card like this into our case. But being a shorter card, this should give us a little bit more room to work around in there. So we're going to go ahead and add this card to the build, this card rather to the build. And the last thing we need is a little bit of storage. And that brings us to the end of the build here because we have found the SSDs we're looking for. I'm really looking to keep this build simple and by adding an NVMe drive instead of a traditional SATA based SSD here, we can keep the cable management as easy as possible. And that's exactly what we're going to do. NVMe drives are actually quite cheap right now. So spending $77 for 512 gigabytes is great. And then of course you can always add a one terabyte hard drive later on for, you know, $25, $30 probably off of somewhere else, maybe even like Amazon or possibly even Newegg here. But regardless, hard drives are cheap. You can add slower storage later on for more massive storage, but to get you up and running very quickly and easily, a 512 gigabyte SSD is gonna be great. So let's go ahead and hop into our cart and look at how we did. So looking at our build here, we actually have a really strong gaming PC with this RTX 2060. We're gonna be seeing great gaming performance. We do want to upgrade the RAM probably down the road. Now, it seems like most games at this point can do just fine with eight gigabytes of system RAM but it's one of those things that I would put on kind of the front burner of upgrades. And then when that money becomes available, you know, you get another $60 together, you can upgrade that to 16 gigabytes. And since this motherboard has those four DIMM slots, there shouldn't be any problem at all throwing in two more sticks and upgrading that way. That being said, our subtotal works out to $601.91. If we scroll clear down to the bottom, we're gonna find and clear down at the bottom here, we have a grand total of $739.90. So what I want to do now is hop over to PC Part Picker and see how that compares to if we were using it for the build instead of just Newegg. Okay, so we have a very interesting result here. PC Part Picker is clearly not perfect because we actually ended up with a higher overall price tag. And that's even accounting for some things like mail-in rebates. You may or may not be willing to hop through that hoop. Now, the rationale here, or the reason that I say PC Part Picker is definitely not perfect here is because my basic methodology was to click on the component if it wasn't something that was non-negotiable, like a Ryzen 5 1600, that's kind of non-negotiable. That's the CPU for the build. Uh, that's the CPU I was gonna go with. But things like the motherboard, I just sorted by cheapest and basically picked the one that fit my criteria. In this case, this was the cheapest uh, PC Part Picker could find for a motherboard with four DIMM slots. Now what makes that a little bit interesting is that actually shoehorns us then into spending more money later on. For example, this DIY PC case is a mid-tower case because we ended up in an ATX motherboard. Now, because we have the ATX motherboard, we have to spend a little bit more money than 
on the case. Now it was only ended up being $5 more, but it was a little bit more money. Now there are places where PC part picker did better. For example, this NVMe drive is only 500 gigabytes. So we're losing 12 gigabytes of storage, but it's a little bit cheaper. And also this power supply is also a little bit cheaper than what we found by just going to Newegg and running through that. But again, you have to go through the fact that it's also a mail-in rebate situation. But what's interesting to me is these deals were both on Newegg here which is the side that we were on in the first place. So it's just kind of interesting how this all worked out. In the end, the best practice here, obviously, is to just do a lot of your own research, whether it be through PC Part Picker, Newegg, Amazon, or just a combination really of all of them. And that's how you're gonna get the best overall performance for a very low price. So there it is, guys. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things down below do help out. You can follow the channel on Instagram and on Twitter, at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And also, as always, I'll let YouTube go ahead and queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.